Headers exchange in RabbitMQ routes messages using message headers instead of the usual routing key. A message is considered a match if the value in the headers matches that on the binding. In this video, let's explore how headers exchange in RabbitMQ works, underlying concepts, and how to use it from a .NET application. Hello everyone. My name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my RabbitMQ series. Before exploring the headers exchange, if you're new to exchanges in general in RabbitMQ, I highly recommend checking out my video on the direct exchange where I dive into the details of exchanges, bindings, and routing keys. An understanding of these concepts is really important to work with exchanges in RabbitMQ. A headers exchange is designed for routing on multiple attributes that are more easily expressed as headers than routing keys. So it's possible to bind a queue to a headers exchange using more than one header for matching. A headers exchange is often considered as a direct exchange on steroids, where the routing key does not have to be a string. It can be an integer or even a dictionary of values. We learned earlier that in RabbitMQ, the sender directly sends messages to the exchange. It does not know anything about the queues or the bindings on them. So even in this case, in the headers exchange, when a message is being sent from the sender, it populates the headers on this particular message. Here, we can see that there are two attributes of headers, which is location and temperature with the appropriate values. Now on the receiver side, it sets up the binding to match the messages into different queues. So when setting up the binding, it also sets up the x-match header. This can have two different values. One is all and the other one is any. If it's all, it makes sure that it matches all the header values that's specified on this binding. And if it's any, it only needs to match any one of these header values. So along with the x dash match header value, it can specify the other headers that it needs to match on the message for it to be selected for that particular queue. For example, if we have a message, let's say with these two attributes as the header values, and if the bindings is x dash match all, we can also specify additional header attributes like in here. So it specifies that the location must be Sydney and the temperature must be 25. Now, since in this case it is all, both these headers must match on the incoming message to be selected for this queue. Now, in this case, we have only specified one header. However, it is x dash match all, which means it has to match that one header with that on the message. Now, when it's any, it can match either of these two values. So in this case, if the message has either the location as Brisbane or the temperature as 25, it gets selected into this queue. So in this case, this message gets delivered to this queue as well as this queue in here. Because the temperature is 25 in this case and it matches the any attribute. And in this case, the location and the temperature matches exactly that on the message header. However, in this case, the location is Brisbane and this message does not get filtered for that particular binding. Let's see how we can use headers exchange from a .NET application and see this in action. Here in Rider, I have an existing solution open, which is very similar to the one that I have been building in my previous videos in RabbitMQ. If you want to know how the solution is set up, you can check out the getting started with RabbitMQ video. So this basically has two projects, which has the send and the receive. The send has the sender, and the receive has the receiver. So if we navigate into the send.cs, we can see that it sets up the connection factory, which has the relevant details to connect to the RabbitMQ instance. Amazon MQ is a managed message broker service that supports ActiveMQ and also RabbitMQ. It makes it easy to host a RabbitMQ instance. However, you can use any of the methods that RabbitMQ supports to host your own instance. If I navigate into the Amazon MQ, I can see my current instance that I'm using. So if navigate further into that, we can see all the details of this RabbitMQ instance. You can also navigate to the web console by navigating to this URL here. Once logged in, you can see the details of the queue and the exchanges and bindings, etc. in here, which we will explore further once we've set up the rabbit exchange. So let's navigate back to our code. Inside here, once we have the connection factory, we create the connection and then we also create a channel. The exchanges are created on the channel. 
So here we use the exchange declare method, the exchange name, and also specify the type of exchange. So in this case, this is specified as exchange type dot headers. So this creates a new exchange with this exchange name, which is weather underscore headers. So once we have the exchange created, we can start sending messages to this exchange. The console application simply takes in a couple of parameters like the message, the location, and the temperature, which we plan to add on as headers and uses that to send the message. Now in this case the routing key is empty because the headers exchange ignores the routing key. Even if you were to pass a value in here, the headers exchange is going to ignore that. So once we have the send message, we can use the basic publish method which is used to publish messages to the exchange. So in here we specify the exchange name, the routing key which is string.mt and also the basic props. Now the basic props is where the headers is being set. So we use the create basic properties on the channel object to create the basic properties. Now this supports a header property to which we can add our headers. This is simply a dictionary of string and object type. So in this case, I'm adding the location and the temperature that's coming from the console as the headers into this particular message. So this message gets published into the exchange and is ready to be consumed. So let's look at the receiver side on how to set that up. This solution is freely available in GitHub and I'll put a link in the descriptions below if you want to refer back to this. So let's navigate over to receive.cs and in here we similarly set up the connection factory, establish the connection to the RabbitMQ instance and we create a channel. Now in this case we need to first declare a queue and then set up the bindings on the queue to the exchange. So in this case I'm creating the queue from the queue name that's specified from the console. This allows me to create multiple queues as and when I'm running different receiver instances, which we will see in a moment. We also get up the match type, which is the x dash match header that we need to specify with the value of any or all. Again, coming from the console. We also read the location and also the temperature. So in this case, to set up the queue binding, we need to create a dictionary of string object ourselves and set up the binding headers. So here you can see that I'm setting up the x dash match and the location headers in here. It takes the value from the console and applies that to these header values. Now in case of temperature, I'm setting it up as optional so that only if the temperature value is entered, it adds that as into the header. If it's null or empty, it ignores adding that particular header into the headers list. So once we have the binding headers created, we can use the queue bind function to bind this particular queue to the exchange, in our case, weather underscore headers, and using the binding headers. Now again, the routing key is empty because of which we have specified string.empty. So once the binding is set up, we can use the eventing basic consumer to consume the messages. This is very similar to how we have consumed messages in the previous videos on the other different exchange types. You can look at getting started if you want to learn more about setting up this consumer. All this does is writes it to the console. So let's run this and see this in action. So let's switch over to my console. Let's navigate into the send.cs and let's specify .NET run. So this runs the sender application and it asks us for the message. So let's also create the consumer. So let's open up a different console, navigate to the same place and let's go to the receiver and let's .NET run that as well. Now we have the receiver starting up and it is asking for the queue name. Let's specify the queue name as sydney-all matches for the all header type. So I'm just using purely for convention purposes. And in this case, let's specify the header as all. Now we can specify the location as Sydney, as the name suggests, and let's specify the temperature as 25. Now this needs to match all the conditions for any message to be sent to this consumer. So let's come to the sender and send a message. So let's say test Sydney 25. Now in this case, let's specify the location as Sydney and the temperature as 25. So as soon as we send the message, that is getting processed in here. So you can see this has picked up the message and wrote that into the console. This is because it matched all the conditions on the header as we have specified in the x dash match header type. Now if I was to come back here and send a test message, let's say with just the location as Sydney, however the temperature with a different value. Now in this case, this message does not get sent to this particular consumer because it does not match the headers on this particular binding. So this message 
right now is getting discarded by the exchange. So let's create one more consumer and see the any x dash match header in action. So we have a new instance of the receiver running. So let's specify the queue name in this case as Sydney dash any with the header match type as any in this case. So in here we can specify the location as Sydney again and let's specify the temperature as 25 again. So now this is waiting for the messages. So let's come back here and send a new message. So let's say test message and let's specify the location as Sydney. However, let's specify the temperature as 12 in this case again. This message was delivered to this particular consumer that we just created. Now this is because it matched the header type of Sydney on this particular message that was sent. Even though it did not match the temperature which was 25, however we sent 12. Now since the header type is any and it matched one of them, this message got delivered to this consumer. However we noticed that that message wasn't delivered to our previous consumer. So if you are to send another message, so let's say test new, let's specify the location as something else. So let's say test and let's specify the temperature as 25. Now, even in this case, you can see this message is getting delivered to this Sydney NEQ because in this case, it has matched that on the temperature and not on the location. So since the temperature was 25, it got delivered to this particular queue. So any message which has the temperature 25 or the location header as Sydney will be getting delivered to this particular queue and picked up by our consumer. So let's start one more consumer in here. And this time, let's specify the queue name as Brisbane-any, which has the header match type of any and the location of Brisbane, a different city in Australia. And let's ignore the temperature. So we'll not add the temperature header. So now this case, the message needs to have the location Brisbane to be delivered to this particular consumer. So if I send a new message for Brisbane, so let's specify test Brisbane, and let's also specify the temperature as 25. So let's have the location as Brisbane and the temperature as 25. So in this case, you can see that the message was getting delivered to the consumer where it matched on 25 for the temperature and also to the one that we just created, which matches on the location. However, notice that this consumer does not get that message at all because it does not match on the location for this particular consumer. Now, if I switch back to our RabbitMQ console and navigate to exchanges, you can see the exchange created here. So we have the weather underscore headers exchange with the type of headers. So if I navigate into that, we can see all the queues and the bindings that is created inside it. So we have three queues, which is Brisbane Any, the Sydney All, and also the Sydney Any. You can also see what are the bindings on these inside here. So if you were to navigate into one of them, we can also see the queue details and the consumer details. So if I navigate to Brisbane Any, you can see that it has one consumer already listening on that. Now, right now, there are no messages waiting on this because of which all these counts is zero. So if I was to turn off one of these consumers, so let's turn off the Brisbane one and let's send a few more messages for the Brisbane. So let's specify Brisbane and let's specify 25. That message gets picked up immediately by this consumer because it was running. So if I send one more message, so let's specify again Brisbane and let's specify a different temperature. This time, none of the consumers picked it up. However, if we navigate back into the queues and if we refresh this, we can see there are two messages ready to be picked up in this Brisbane any queue. You can also see that the consumers right now is zero because we turned that off. Now, as soon as that comes back online, so let's specify .NET run. So as soon as it comes back running, picks up those messages and processes it. So if I come back to the queue, you can see that the number of messages has come down to zero again. I hope this helps you to understand more about headers exchange in RabbitMQ. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to be notified of future such videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.